Ahoy hoy gang, if this is your first time with us, welcome, and if you're joining us from a previous video, hey hey, we love to see it, and I hope you're doing well. It's season four! Again, just another banger of a Fox era season. There's a lot to love. I it just, it's very ironic that this was when American Dad was really hitting its stride, and I'm so excited to get into it. So I promise to not be a bore as we go over the top five episodes of season four. Number five, Stan's Night Out. Cheezers came back. It's, it's weird putting a season finale as my number five pick, but honestly, it it is the perfect capstone on an otherwise wonderful season. It is a great episode to go out on. And Stan's Night Out is just such a strong celebration of Stan and the CIA boys. It's got some of the most quotable jokes. It's got some of the most memorable scenes. The episode just shines. Also, Brian Doyle Murray was in it, and I remember this was back when I was watching Flapjack, and I was like, oh my god, that's Captain Knuckles. You know, never put one and one together. But Stan's Night Out is just... Ugh. I... Between it works the first time, every time, and Stan just being able to go out and hang out with his friends is just so wholesome. Like, he's, we have seen how he's grown up, we have seen what he's gone through, and now, you know, Francine is encouraging him to go out with his friends and have a fun time, and then things fall apart. And it's great! It, it's just that absolute spiral is something we needed to see with his CIA friends. Because they had largely been just in the background. Now, here you were with Stan and his crew right in the forefront. And I think that helps moving forward, having them be more incorporated into the show. This way, you know who they are, you have this brief time with their characters, and, you know, it, it works. Stan's Night Out is easily the, not the best of the season, but it's up there. Number four, Roy Rogers McFreely. Featuring the musical stylings of cilantro, everyone loves Roy Rogers McFreely. It's another really solid Stan and Roger episode that the idea that they go for with it, just Stan needing to respect Roger is something they'll do in like Wiener of Our Discontent and Pinata Named Desire, and all of those are fine. All of those are really, really good. But there's something about Roy Rogers McFreely that just sort of sings to me. I think it's, you know, Stan and Haley working together against a common antagonist in Roger? That's great! We get more of the Neighborhood Watch, we get more of Greg, we get, help, they're taking me out on the veranda! Like, that's all wonderful! I think that really shows why Season 4 is when that momentum was really picking up. Because, unlike Family Guy, where around this time they were going even heavier into the cutaway gags. And as the show evolved, that's really what it would just become, is joke after joke after joke, so it would work on TikTok or shorts and get more traffic coming in. With American Dad, they let jokes simmer. They let you just sit and watch, and if you catch the joke and laugh, that's awesome. If you keep watching, you'll eventually hear a joke that will get you but they keep making references to jokes from earlier in the episode, so if you pay attention to it, you get rewarded. And it's just, again, I don't think that's appreciated enough. They don't dumb down the scripts. They don't hold your hand and explain every joke to you, and I, I think that's what makes American Dad so special. Because they don't take that time, they are allowed to actually spend more time telling bigger and better jokes. There's jokes that can have proper build-up, and Roy Rogers McFreely, just that constant bringing up of cilantro, the hat dance at the end of the episode, just like, wow, wow, okay, yeah. Like, that, that is a perfect, just like, ending note, just right there. It didn't have to be there, but it kind of brings the whole episode together. Number three, Family Affair. Anything with Will Forte is going to be on my list. At some point, it is going to be up there. And while he only had, like, four lines, that was all he needed. Love Will Forte. Family Affair is honestly probably in my top 10 favorite Roger adventures. And like we, we still have even more to talk about in this season alone. 
but it's just it's such a creative idea with Roger. We know he's been around longer than the Smith family. We know he's probably had other families. He's lived other lives. It would make sense. And then to find out he's got like four different families he's interacting with at any one time, that's great. That that is an element to his character that you don't think about, but has so much room to explore. Again, it's not just joke after joke after joke. It's Roger putting on this big lie, this big performance, and then getting caught in it, and then doubling down. It, it works so well as a foil for who he is. And then everyone dealing with his betrayal and the phone plan and everything. It's great! The Dubonnets! Monsieur Dubonnet! Du, du Lemonade! Like, that's... Ah, uh, family affair is just good comedy. It is it is solid writing for solid people to appreciate. I I love Family Affair. Number 2, The One That Got Away. There are good episodes of American Dad. There are bad episodes of American Dad. The One That Got Away, and this is probably going to be controversial, much in the same vein as say Star Trek is one of the best experimental foundational episodes of American Dad. Not only does it set up that Roger's personas have minds of their own sometimes, it gives us one of the best Roger vehicles, it gives us some of the best voice acting, John DiMaggio's in the episode, he's terrific, but yeah, and again, Seth MacFarlane's voice acting is terrific in this because he has to be both Roger and Sydney. He has to make Sydney sound like Roger, but have the cadence of a completely different character. Maybe he's dyslexic and mad at Disney. I don't know. I just know what he did to that sapling. It is such a good episode that keeps you guessing. Even the end part is fantastic. And again, they don't make references that you're expected to understand. Like in that episode, Roger dresses up like Charles Bronson's character from Death Wish. Who knew Death Wish when this episode came out that was, say, my age? Like, it wasn't something that was appealing to younger audiences who was still very much trying to get the parents, getting the older kids, and getting, you know, film snobs. They don't make Seven Circle references because they want, you know, because no one's gonna get them. They knew who their audience is. American Dad just, it just hit it out of the park with the one that got away. And the funniest part is, it's not even number one. I'm gonna keep doing that. I'm gonna keep doing that on every number two. I, I have decided. Number one, Phantom of the Telethon. I genuinely don't know if I prefer Phantom of the Telethon or 100 AD as like a 100th American Dad episode celebration. Phantom of the Telethon is not the 100th episode. It's not even close. It's got a couple seasons before that happens. But it is a very special episode. It's a celebration of American Dad up to that point. It features a lot of return characters. Great, great performances across the board. It's a wonderful Roger and Stan story. You get to see Steve and the boys be writers. That's terrific. You get Jeff Hacky sacking. Just straight putting the heat on that sack. You love it. You love to see it. And honestly, like, as much as I can say, like, the one that got away is foundational for adult animation and this and that, I just really love Phantom of the Telethon. I just really love the arm is disbombed. Like, I, there, there are just some dumb jokes in that episode that just bring me absolute joy. It, Phantom of the Telethon is not the smartest American Dad episode. It's not the most creative but it is one of the most fun. It is one of the most, as odd as it is, laid back adventures of the show. There, There is absolutely a ticking clock. They established the ticking clock early on, but as the episode keeps revving up, that ticking clock matters both more and more and feels less and less important. Obviously, you know everybody's gonna be fine. This isn't TBS American Dad. They're not gonna subvert your expectations like that, but it's that pseudo levity in American Dad around a situation like that that makes American Dad so good. It's a situation that'd be like, next time on Family Guy, will they get to the bottom of it? And then it's just, you know, Roger running up and beating a guy with a keyboard until he tells him the code. Like, that's that's great. It is, it is so dumb, it's smart. It's just, ah, uh, it's just quality. 
And there we have it, gang. That was season four. Anything you think I was right on, wrong on? What are your favorite episodes of season four? Least favorite? Let me know in the comments below. Season four was probably one of the hardest ones I had to come up with a top five list on. It just has some of my absolute favorite episodes of all time. It's just really, really solid. I mean, how could you not put Phantom of the Telethon near the top? If that's not in everyone's top five, I'm calling shenaniganery. Anyway, if you like what you saw, make sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe. And remember, patrons and members get these episodes first, so if you would like to see more of them, make sure to join today, and you can join this wonderful list of incredible people that keep this channel running. Thank you all so much for watching. Stay strong, stay you, and keep on keeping on. I'll see you next time when we take a dive into Season 5. Goodbye, everybody.